Okay. Just about to go live here. Welcome to the show. Just waving at my daughter in the, and my wife in the background. How are you doing? Um, my name is Michael Markowski. I'm coming to you live from my childhood home here in Calgary. This is um, our final show while we're on the road and traveling. And then uh, next Tuesday, we'll be back in Vancouver where my studio is. And um, a little bit more control over some of the things, but it's been really interesting trying to set all this stuff up on the go. As you, if you've watched a few of these episodes before, it's, it's, uh, there's been some challenges and some audio problems, um, that I've experienced and stuttering video and, uh, and yet people have been, uh, following along, watching the entire episodes all the way through. So I am incredibly grateful to those of you that have had the patience to deal with some of those tech problems and yet um, complete all of the lessons and uh, so speaking of which I want to show you guys some of the work that um, people have been doing and uh, I'm going to give a little bit of quick feedback on it. I usually do this at the end but last episode uh, I wasn't able to do that um, as the batteries were dying and I was having a little bit of problems on this old iPad that I've been using. So I thought I would just kind of do that right off the top. And I think, especially if this is the first episode that you're tuning into, you're going to be really excited to see what people have been up to. And it might inspire you to go back and, and watch some of the earlier episodes. I mean, I would suggest going all the way back to the first one and then watching them all in order. Um, but you can you know, do them a la carte. I, I don't, I try to kind of keep them as, um, uh, you know, self-contained as possible. So anyway, let's get right to it here. So, um, are you going to come down here and save? Okay. So here, this actually is a drawing that Heidi, I mean, we're going to look at, I think, Four of her drawings right off the top and this is one she sent maybe a month ago and I apologize that I, I uh, just kept on forgetting to get to it um, and you know I'm not sure off the top of my head what um, the story uh, of this drawing was and where uh, the inspiration for it came from so actually I'm just gonna look at it here I'm going to brighten the screen up a little bit for myself here. Okay. Um, but this is beautiful. So this is, I'm assuming kind of when we first started talking about portraitures when you did this drawing, Heidi, and it looks fantastic. We're using all of the lessons that we talked about in terms of uh, adding value, shading, that kind of thing. So you're using mostly the blending to add this really nice soft um, uh, tone to the uh, and the shading to the, to the rounding the face to give it volume. And I think this works fantastically. Um, I don't really have many comments here that, except, you know, I, I really, one of the things I really like is you went nice and dark with these drawings and you can see that really a lot of people, I would say that's probably the number one thing I notice when people are doing drawings and they're, they're not working out to their satisfaction. It's just because they're not going dark enough. Now, having said that, you can do drawings that are very kind of lightly done and that can look beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it, but 
that as long as that's what you're intending to do and you're trying to get that particular effect which gives a kind of very moody misty quality it looks like there's a lot of atmosphere you know smog or uh so but generally you want to get a little bit of darkness in your pencil and that's what most people are afraid of doing because it feels like you're making a real big commitment in this case i think you did a great job uh the hair works well I like especially these kind of curls um, on towards her shoulder, the details of her necklace, fantastic. I guess one little thing with the eyes is it looks like somebody who's the, it's, I can tell it's from a photograph and it looks like there's, um, you know, the effect of like the flash bulb going off and illuminating someone's eyes, right? Um, and this may be a photo of, of you, all right? And so, what ends up happening is we we lose the detail of the pupil so the the black dot that is generally in the middle of your eyes is now white um which is unusual and it it looks photographic in that sense so to get it maybe more natural would be to darken that spot and then keep some of that white as a highlight having said that i think it looks like a great drawing should you go in and do any more work to it maybe not just because it looks like a photograph doesn't mean it's bad. So I don't want to, I don't want that to be uh, the takeaway from this. So great drawing. Let's continue moving on here. So I think in your in your message you wrote that this was a drawing that you did during the last class. So this is your self portrait that you did over the course of Tuesday's episode. Again, great job. Here, I'm going to have a sip of water here. I forgot to get my tea for today's episode. I don't know if anybody is <clears throat> listening. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, fantastic. Look at this great work. Um, I don't have many things I can say about this. Um, obviously, we've never met. Um, so I, I, I don't know how closely it, re it resembles you. Um, I think there's... It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> there's there's your your uh, your picture up in the corner. So I actually, I mean, based on that little detail, this looks like a fantastic drawing. You know, the way that you've each eye looks a little bit different, which is, you know, I, I think sometimes we look at our face and then we we see those quote unquote imperfections, and it, it can upset us when we're doing these drawings. Um, so kudos to you for not trying to kind of change it and make it totally perfectly symmetrical because then you would disappear from your own drawing, right? And I want to remind people, some people are probably looking at this, maybe this is the first time you've tuned in an episode and be like, wow, that's an amazing drawing. I, I could never do anything like that. This is somebody who's been following along to the episodes. I mean, I have no idea how good you were before this, Heidi, but uh, I'm going to take all the credit. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, fantastic work. Really, really great. Great drawing. Um, you could see like there's an intensity of the way that your, your eyes are looking at the drawing. I like that you challenge yourself also with uh, having an open mouth and the teeth which is also can be very difficult. Sometimes drawing a mouth with teeth can make people look like uh, um, almost angry, but you've done a really good job um, uh, with that. So uh, um, little thing, I guess, I mean, one thing I would say is the hair looks a tad bit messy. Um, so it does look like... Um, maybe just uh, you know i think i think you well i think your next drawing here because i did do a little peek you did do i think this exercise again so let's actually look at that again and i think you'll see how you've solved some of these things the second time you did it which is what i was saying last time you know if you, you're unhappy with your self portrait and if it's the very first self portrait you did or you've done try doing it again and i guarantee you it's going to get better now I th I'm trying to remember, I was pulling these together right before the show, and I think you did mention something about maybe using a grid for this one, or was it another drawing? Um, if you did use a grid, I can't see the grid in there, which is a good 
which means you're using that grid really, really well because it kind of disappears. I don't know if I... S oh, I maybe see a few very subtle lines, but that's how generally you want to use the grid is to make it invisible so that you don't see um, you, that, that technique. Um, anyway, what I was just saying about the hair and being a little bit... Um, uh, a little bit rushed this time, even if you're still going at the same speed, it just looks like I think you've kind of got it. You kind of figured out a little bit more of how to do it and pull it off. It looks super believable. Um, again, the teeth, fantastic. I think, you know, a good example here. Oh, look at this. It's great service here. I've got a tea. tea best wife in the world. Thank you, love. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, so you can see the difference between the way that you've drawn the teeth here, right, where you've kind of articulated each individual tooth versus here where you've kind of, oh, let's go back here. You've, you've kind of taken a little bit of the lines out in between the teeth, right, to, uh, uh, just make it a little bit softer so that they don't look so fang-like. Not that they did before, but that's often what happens when people are drawing teeth. That they, uh, Even though that that's the way they look in a photograph, when we draw it, things change, right? So other little things here, you know, we could see that from... You know, there's more detail. I think one of the things you've done even more here is you've gone even darker with your pencil. And it just gives even more depth to the drawing, makes it look more believable, more, more dimension in there. The There's just more feeling in this drawing. It just pops a little bit more. Um, the Yeah, I, I mean, I also, I think it's what's interesting is the way that you've used this kind of scribble method, circles in the background. And that also helps push your face off of the background. As we look here... You know, again, it's lighter, and then the background is kind of just a, a quick little scribble in the background. Whereas here, that, you know, as we could see right around the side of your face, um, that bit of darkness helps pop this, uh, what would it be your, if you're looking at the screen right now, the right side of your face. And then you've used the dark side of the other side of your face to contrast with the white. So that works really well. You always want to think about those contrasts between light and dark, big and small, wide and thin, like blah, 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 blah. Contrast is one of the most important parts of drawing um, to help differentiate different shapes from one another, different spaces from one another, etc. Great work. And I'm just going to, I don't know if you meant to show this, but I, I saw on your Instagram this other drawing that you've done. And I just wanted to share this because this is fantastic. It's kind of along the lines of what we're about to do today. But boy, oh boy, like look at the, the progression just over these fat past few drawings where you're at now. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, I don't really, I mean, look at the way you've done the hair. The, the face is super believable. I think the only little thing is that there's a, it's a little bit dark right around the nose, and so it maybe brings a little bit more attention to the nose than um, needs to be there. Um, but, uh, wow, that is... I'm really, really impressed. Look at... I mean, just the subtle use of the shadow underneath your chin, around your eyes. Wow, great job. Very proud of you. Way to go, Heidi. So anybody watching this is capable of doing what she has done today, just following all the basic things that we've done. We're on episode, what is this, 24, I think? So, you know, if you're, again, just tuning in and you're thinking this is impossible, go back, start at number one. You know, it'll, it, that's, uh, you know, it's, it'll take you a little bit of time to do each one of them, but I, considering people <laughs> have been watching these, I don't think it's a waste of your time, and you can see the results as they as they appear here. Okay, so great job. I'm, I'm going to move on, because I want there's a few more things I want to chat about here. Yannick sent in these drawings. Um, uh, this is an older one that he sent in. Look at this texture on this tree. 
absolutely fantastic. Oh my goodness. So this is, you know, the difference between somebody just drawing a generic tree from their imagination versus doing something like this and really nailing all of the little individual characteristics, even to the difference between the branches. I mean, what can I say? I guess the only thing I would say is it would be nice to see the background given some attention as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is this this is the kind of thing that when you zoom in and you you can start looking at all of these little things, and this takes you know some patience to do that because a lot of people don't have the patience to go in and model all of these little shadows on there. But it boy does it pay off, right? Um, these are some street lamps that you sent in that you wanted. Um, uh, this is these are great. I mean, again, I don't know if you were how you just laying on your back while you were drawing these, or how you, how you, these are based on photographs that we can see kind of sketches above and the top. Um, but this goes to show that you can do drawings of anything. That you don't have to wait for this magical inspiration to appear. You can do really cool drawings of uh, street lamps. And they look believable. Like, again, that darkness really helps. Now, here's some... I think you've got two self-portraits you sent of um, of your of, of yourself, Unique. <laughs> and this is the first one. And I don't know if this is the one you did during our last session or not. The um, That orange at the bottom... <laughs> my first reaction is it looks like this is... Uh, uh, you're in jail or something. And... Um, this is your you've, you're letting your your beard grow out a little bit, so it cracks me up. Maybe, I mean, uh, here everybody's on quarantine. It kind of feels a little bit like we're in prison a bit, right? Um, but you know, I've we've met. You've taken my classes before when we were doing these classes in person, so I can see you. I recognize your face in these in, in this artwork. Little things that I would suggest here is just maybe. I can see the attention you spent on the eyes, particularly, and, and really nailing the facial, like your nose and your lips. I, I can see all of them there. I would say that the the uh, your stubble, though, I feel your mark making speeding up and going much faster, and it, it's getting a little bit sloppy. So, um, and same thing with your hair kind of starts looking like a hat, or maybe it is a hat. Maybe that is a baseball hat. Um... So it's, and that's a common thing. A lot of people will spend a lot of time on one part of the face, like the eyes, because they are important. And then other things we kind of let go a little bit. So here's another uh, self-portrait. I think it's kind of um, looks like your sketchbook ended right above your nose there. So, oh, I got an ant crawling on me. Um... And so look at this. Look at the way that you've done the hair is fantastic. Um, so we can really feel the um, the density of the hair on your head. And I say that just because I was my mother has been following along to these classes and she showed me uh, her own self portrait. And that was one of the things that I noticed is it sort of looked and she's been working on it and maybe she'll let me show it to you. But it, it looked kind of like we had some hair on the front and then the backs of the head was shaved, right? Because we just so part of that is drawing the other hairs that are in behind the front of the hair on the front. And then adding some darkness, as you've done in, in here, to, to make it look like there's more hair in between. So it would be kind of the difference between, you know, drawing five trees side by side, and it looks like there's just five trees planted on somebody's yard versus a forest where there's you know, infinite amount of trees in behind those front trees. So you've captured that depth here. So this is fantastic. Um, and the eyes, like, look at the, I feel the, I, f I feel your eyes and, and even kind of a little bit of your personality coming through these eyes, um, that you've really captured, like the, 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 the reflection on there feels fantastic. And I, it looks like you're doing some blending maybe with your finger. Uh, so I, I would love to see the bottom half of your face and see how you tackle the nose. Cause you know, I think that's often one of the things that, uh, 
we, you know, the nose is a difficult part of the face to draw. So I would challenge you to, to try drawing, even if you do, just try literally drawing this part of your face. And when you feel comfortable, then try drawing your full face again, because clearly you can do it. So, um, you know what? Okay, so I do have a whole other series of artworks that another student sent me um, just a few hours ago, and I do want to show those, but maybe, you know, we're, uh, time is flying here, so I think what I want to do is to move to our uh, first, because I want to start drawing today. You're like, some of you are like, yeah, it was great. People are doing really great artwork. But let's actually see <laughs> some drawing happen. I want to tune into a drawing class. I want to get some drawing done. So um, let's go to your sketchbook. Open it up to a blank page. And let me see. I might leave one blank here. And I was thinking about profiles, because today we're drawing the side of the face. So how do we draw the side of the face? What is, as far as I'm concerned, I was trying to think, what is the most famous profile um, that I could think of? And, you know, if you pick up your, your uh, if you got any change in your pocket, you've seen, whether, if you're here in Canada, you've seen the Queen of England, um, or... Um, if you're living in the States, uh, on the pen, well, it depends on what, what denomination of, uh, change you have. I think it's, who's on the back of the penny? I'm trying to think. Is It's, uh, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington's on the quarter. Who's on the nickel and who's on the dime? I'm trying to think off the, off the top of my head. Um, but on Canadian money, it's we got the queen on everything. <laughs> so, uh, but and there, you know, on in the history of of money, it was often the the side profile is uh, is is what we see on the change. So, those are all very famous and ubiquitous. But I was thinking, what is probably the most famous one that I could think of? is um does anybody recognize this image here i'll take a quick sip this might might show my age a little bit because what we're looking at on the screen this is um alfred hitchcock the famous film director this is his signature so i think i have another image here oops maybe make i need oh I guess it's not going to... Um, oh, so here's Alfred Hitchcock. This is how he would sign like a book or whatever. He, so he famously drew this very silly um, sketch of his face. So, and then, well, and here's what he looks like in person. And he would often kind of assume this kind of, you know, very funny um, uh, <laughs> pose. And I th if I recall in the original shows, he would kind of step into his profile. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just thought for something kind of fun, why don't we try... Um, this will be a, a quick drawing, because we've we got lots of stuff I want to cover today. So maybe just as a quick little warm-up, we can... Let's draw... Is this too simple of a warm-up drawing? Maybe it's too simple, but you know what? Um, let's, if we, we're gonna try to do this and try to make it as accurate as possible, I guess. So let's, let me get to another view here. And let's draw the self-portrait of Alfred Hitchcock. And you can even try drawing his, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll get the other one with his signature on here. But this is the the stylized one that was on the television show and some of the films. So again, you can use whatever pencil you want. You, you, but I, as you know, often use a pink and a blue so I can show the pink is the first few lines, my underdrawing, my sketch, and then I'm going to go over it with the blue. So how would I do this... Um, 
you know, deceptively simple drawing. Well, let's let's take a look at the image and let's try to find the basic shapes that are here. So, um, often I, tr I try to work my way from the center to begin with. So let's start with a circle because we've got kind of his his mouth, his kind of jowls are kind of right there in the center. Right, and this would be where the lips are going to be. I'll just draw this a little bit darker. And you see when I'm doing these circles, I can go 50 times around and around until I kind of start getting something I'm happy with. And, you know, I'm not going to draw this part of it, but if I just try to draw that arc, some people may have a problem trying to get that, right? So now let's draw this nose right? And then same thing. Let's just add, it looks, well, let's try, let's try drawing another circle, the same size on top, almost like a, a snowman, right? And then we can see, right? How does this work? Right? And then we've, so I think, I think that's okay. And then he's kind of got this little bit of a, I, that's his hair on the top, a few lines. Then we're missing his chest down here. And it appears to kind of crisscross through. Okay, so now, so it looks kind of silly. So let's now kind of pull it all together with, I'm gonna go over it with a, you could use a, just a darker pencil. And if you wanted, you could erase some of these earlier lines if you don't, if you feel they're not, uh, helpful anymore. So I'm going to go over this line here for his cheek. And you could see that that line, you know, appears to get wider and then thinner again, right? So let's do that. I'm going to kind of widen, figure out where the widest part in this line is. And then I'm going to kind of taper it back out to this edge. Same thing down here. I'm going to go wider. All right. Okay. And I'm just looking at, I guess, you know, if you want, so mine right now is kind of very pointy edges. If you want to kind of soften them out and, you know, I could, I'm going to widen it. And then that means I got to widen it again. <laughs> there's one. I've never done the, this drawing. I mean, there's a beautiful simplicity to Hitchcock's, like this signature, I think is really, so now I'm just gonna do these lips. You know, cause he would, you know, those uh, kind of Donald Trump kind of duck lip kind of thing going on. <laughs> uh, there we go. And, you know, if you wanna make them bigger, you can continue making them as big as you like. Now I'm going to do his nose and this shape coming up here. You know, this little doodle that we're doing right now, it kind of shows you that you could create a really cool logo for yourself um, or your company or... Um, you know, uh, whatever it is, a sports team, just starting with something very simple. Like we just got a few little circles here and we're off to the races to create a portrait, right? To create something very iconic. And this is, you know, something he, he built and kind of fostered, right? Okay, let's keep on going up here. So we've kind of, these are almost the same, this one's a little bit shorter, but they're very similar kind of these little arcs. A 
be curious to know what people's favorite Alfred Hitchcock film is. Um, there's there's certain of his movies that I've seen like 50 times, and I keep getting them kind of mixed up, which is the one I haven't seen. So I've seen Rear Window many times, which is an amazing film. Still holds up, but a guy who's... Conf I think he broke his leg or something. Uh, Cary, Cary Grant, right? Um, who's confined to his wheelchair while he's, uh, uh, his leg is, is healing. And he starts seeing, he thinks he sees somebody being murdered in the apartment across the, the what is it? Um, you know, there's a kind of a U-shaped apartment complex. And he thinks he sees um, somebody being murdered across, but he, he's not sure. And I think he calls the police, but they don't find a body. And, you know, chaos ensues. Um, but, uh, you know, fa fantastic uh, film. North by Northwest, which is maybe one of his most famous and features many iconic um scenes such as the 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 i don't know if you call it chase scene the, on on mount rushmore and um and the, the airplane almost uh knocking him down in the middle of the road and um let me see I f i'm kind of feeling like i did a, went a little bit on on the way that I on my screens here, um, I sometimes can't see the very top of the image. So, anyway, something like that. Okay, and then now I'm going to just finish it off with uh, what is supposed to be his chest. Okay, so this line here I'm not too happy with because I kind of want it to be more of an arc. So I'm going to kind of rescue it by just making this line wider until I get kind of the shape that I want. Um, another, another one that I remember we talked about when I was in art school in a film class is Rope. Um, which is a movie that's, that looks like it's done all in one take, although there's a couple of quick little uh, edits to make it look like it's... Uh, but it looks like it's all done in one long take, which is amazing. Dial M for Murder, Spellbound. Oh, my goodness. The, the, you know, probably one of the... I mean, I sound like a fool saying he was one of the best because, you know, obviously... Okay. If I do too much more here, I feel like this is going to turn into a top hat <laughs> on the top. And I feel like it should be, I'm kind of curving it a little bit more than it should be. So I may, might just leave it like that. And that looks pretty good. And so uh, these earlier lines, my guidelines are going to kind of, if, it's, if I was to erase it, I could get rid of some of these. Or if you were drawing very, very lightly, they would just disappear completely. Anyway. I think we're really warmed up and ready to go here. So I'm just going to, for those of you that are still finishing. And, and again, often the, the most simple images are the most difficult to draw because any quote unquote mistakes that you make seem more obvious because there's nowhere to hide them, right? So... Sometimes people say, oh, yeah, I can do this in 30 seconds, right? Well, to, to do it well and to make it look accurate actually is, is, is not easy. So, okay, I feel, feel good about this. Are we ready to move on? And I'm going to show you how to draw a, the profile of a person's face here. So, um, in this instance, let's go back to here. Okay, so 
I'm going to grab my pink again to start. So how should we do this? Um, you know what? I think the best way, I'm actually going to bring this back and I'm going to change this and make this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to turn the sketchbook on to its side because we're going to do a really, we're going to draw the, the front of the face and we're going to do the side of the face uh, right next to it so that you can kind of see how they relate side by side. So <laughs> um, let's start off with, we're going to draw... In fact, I'm actually even just going to divide this. Uh, let's say if this is the middle of your sketchbook, I'm just slide. Okay, I'm gonna actually going to go just a little bit uh, west to the left of middle, right? Just because the the front of the face is less wide than the side of the face, so I just don't want to run out of room and chop off a nose or something. So, and also, so to help that too, let's, we're not going to draw it too big. So we're going to start out with an oval shape here. All right. So, and then this all should be fairly, um, like a good uh, review for those of you that have done all of these, these classes, but we're going to divide the face in half. Uh, vertically, and then we're going to go horizontally. All right. I think this is a little bit. That's well. I was going to say. Let's. This is supposed to. Be, so I'm just raising the eyes up. Divide, putting the pupil halfway between the outside of the face and the inside of the face. Okay. The nose, so now we're gonna go halfway down. Put the tip of the nose there, and then the mouth is halfway between here. Technically, the mouth is gonna go the length between the pupils, something like that. And then your hairline is halfway between your eyes and the top of your head. All right, so. Just gonna do a little bit of erasing here. So, I feel like maybe that bottom line under the eyes was a little confusing. Okay. And then, if you remember, if this is our nose line, the ears kind of go down between the eyes and ears, just like that. You can also, while we're here, we can even do a little bit of the neck. So the neck, you see where the mouth kind of meets the outside of the face is roughly kind of where your neck would be. Okay, time for a cup of tea. Or a sip of tea, I mean. Okay. The, so um, we've already, I've done an, enough episodes where we've talked about how to draw these features. Um, but for, it might be helpful for us to just actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think like, oh, I'm going to speed through this, but I think for us to see how it lays out on this side, we are going to, I'm just going to take a little bit of extra time to let's, so let's draw your, these eyeballs and actually I'm going to draw the, them a little bit bigger than All right so because you want to think at least your, another eyeball could fit in between here and depending on how your style of drawing they your eyes these eyeballs could be bigger or smaller All right and so then we would have your um, eyelids here. And then let's say this is the, your, your brow right here coming down here. 
and we've done the, um, let's say we'll, we'll use this technique, we'll just draw a ball for the tip of the nose. Here's your nostrils, so this kind of goes down like this. And then your lips, um, we'll just do a quick little V. And then up and out, up and out. Oops. As we start here, and then our bottom lip. All right. So depending on how big of a chin you have, your chin could kind of move down here or your jaw could be wider. I, as I said, I tend to kind of make my lips a, like a little bit smaller than they are here because they can kind of look really big, but um, I think that's good for right now. Okay. So again, as I, I, I just, I think it's important just to mention again that what we're doing is a very generic structure of the human face. And, and in every single case, when you're drawing a face, things move slightly up and down. Maybe the nose gets longer or shorter, the lips bigger or smaller, wider or, th you know, uh, thinner, blah, blah, blah. The ears can get, can come out or be flatter against the head. Right, you know, so on and on. I just want, I think it's really important to remember that, especially when we do in this way, that everyone's head shape is a little bit different. Okay, so um, I'm actually I'm just going to use a different color here for guidelines. What color should I? I'm going to use a a green, I think. Okay, so it's going to contort my body so I can draw some horizontal lines across here. So we're going to draw ordinarily those of you at home you can what's great about drawing unlike writing I guess is that you can turn your sketchbook onto its side and you can draw these lines. For, for me it, I, it, for or for you anyway, it would be a little bit crazy if my sketchbook was turning so much. So I have to try to do this. Uh, looks, I think that's okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I guess I also maybe I'll show you a little technique how I would do this if I don't have a ruler and I try not to draw with a ruler, or at least teach with a ruler. Is let's say I really did want to make this as accurate as possible. The one thing I might do is I might make little, use my fingertips, or, you know, make, let's say, this here. Oops. Again, this is kind of a little bit awkward. Is go, okay. From, well, maybe I'll go right up to this edge. All right, and then I can go here and say, that is a mark. Same thing, let's just for this sake, just so you see how I do this here. I'm kind of pinching my pencil top and bottom of the page, pinching down here. All right, and if I want. So this just tells me as I'm drawing my line across here where it needs to go. All right? But again, I'm not too worried about getting super specific. I just think it's helpful for you to 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 know like these techniques that artists are always using to make their artwork. Okay, so this is now going to be the top and the bottom of the head. And let's do another one. Um, well, let's actually, let's, we're going to carry all of these lines straight across. So let's say this eye line, which should be right in the middle. So we're going to go right across here. Let's take our hairline again, which should be right across here. Our nose should be roughly halfway. And then the lips roughly halfway. Okay. And I think... I think, I think we're ready to go here. So now what the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle here. And 
I've, I've, well, I, I'm not even actually going to, there are many different techniques that people use to draw the structure of the side of the head. So, um, do I want to mention any of them and can potentially confuse people? Um, we're going to draw a circle. Often I've seen people draw an oval shape up here or draw literally this same shape again and rotate it on its side. There's no perfect way again. The, the reason why I'm showing you this system is it's the most simple um, way that I know of um, so that it, it simplifies things for people. And then once you kind of get the basics in there, then you can play. So I'm actually going to go up to this. This is going to be um, the outside edge of this circle, right? And then we're going to get up to here, right? So then we're almost going right down to the bottom. Um... So actually, you know what, this line here, our eye, our brow line, we want to draw that as well. Because this is going to be the center of this circle, right? So this, in fact, let's put, uh, how far should we go? About here is where. So if you had a compass, you could draw this. So the bottom is going to be basically about half, basically kind of where the bottom lip is. So just a little bit below the mouth line. Okay. So you could see drawing a circle when you're trying to draw it within a specific space is kind of tricky. You know, drawing a circle, just a random circle on a page, you know, once, you, once you've kind of figured out the technique is relatively straightforward. Once you try to, though, fit it in a space, it's kind of tricky to do. So you can see I've kind of gone, it's my angle here, at, is it just me or does it look like it's a little bolt? Well, that, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter to get this perfect anyway. So let's divide it in half here. So you've got kind of like a target. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is from this point here is we're just going to draw a line straight down. Okay, and this right here is the chin, right? And then from here, we're going to draw a kind of a, a uh, kind of like a semicircle. Now, a kind of maybe more of a semicircle will be like this, but we're just going to widen it and kind of curve it in here. Like that, just, yeah. There. So this is your jaw coming right down to here. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, let's draw the ears. So, or let's wait, let's, let's wait to draw the ears because that, that is uh, a whole other conversation we'll get to shortly here. So... We're going to draw the eyes here, right? So this is our eye line. From the side, your eyes kind of look like a, a triangle. And we're going to... So this is the outside of your face. I'm going to recess them in a little bit. And often what we do is we draw the top line higher and then your eyeball in here. So if we imagine this would be... The same size eyeball in this space here. So we're going to finish this diagram, and then in about 
five minutes we're going to do this again and we're going to draw a face on top of, of a on a different page as again so this this way you can kind of refer to these two things side by side okay so this again your iris would be kind of touching or being overlapped a little bit by your eyelids and then you'd have your pupil here okay now from right about here generally people's their brow comes out a little bit right and then your then kind of comes maybe back into the head and then your forehead kind of goes back like this uh, maybe maybe i should be using well i'll finish with the pink and then we'll go back over top of all this stuff again maybe okay and then this is your nose right so your nose kind of comes out of the face and you can see i'm slanting it up a little bit right so pretty much nobody has a nose that is is straight flat they always some people have noses that point higher and higher and higher you know getting this angle is actually a really important part of drawing a person's face okay and then i'm just going to connect this so a little triangle on the top okay and then we're going to look at we've got this line for the middle between the lips Right, so same sort of thing, just comes out a little bit, back a little bit, and then we got kind of a chin shape here. As you learn a little bit more about drawing faces, what people often do is, is raise the, the lips a little bit higher but for our purpose, I think this is good. Now, um, what we would normally um, do if we were drawing ears, on this side we could see our ears are right here, between the eye and the nose, right? Um, now, that works when we're looking at somebody straight on. And because the ears are further back, they appear to get smaller, right? And which is fine. Like generally, the drawing somebody's ears smaller is better. If you're gonna, if there's any question, should I the ears should I get the bigger or smaller? I would say always go smaller when you're drawing somebody straight on. Now, if I was to going to draw remember the avocado shape from the episode where we were drawing ears right if i was to draw the ears like this they may appear to be a little bit too small right they, they, they you could still do this on on the profile um but they may appear to be a little bit too small so when we're be but now when because when the eye when the head turns now this is actually the closest thing to the viewer or to the camera so the ear is actually going to appear to get a little bit larger right so instead of it fitting in between here this is going to be the where kind of the top of the ear appears and then the bottom of the ear is a little bit lower right so with the avocado gets bigger. Does that make sense? And you can kind of use this guideline here. We'll just kind of draw our avocado and like that. Okay. And then for hair, so when we were drawing the hairline on this side, we might have hair. Let's say if this was my head, my hairline would be something like this. Maybe I'll, I'll draw. I mean, I'm going to go over top of this with... So this might be my hairline, let's say, 
I've got, this is my hair on here. You could draw, since you, maybe you've done your self-portrait from last week, you have an idea of where your hair goes, right? So if that was my hair, here's my ears. All right. Widen my face out a little bit. All right. Um... Just gonna take a second to go over this and make it a little bit more. Put some personality back into this this drawing. And like I said, I'm gonna shrink these lips down just a bit. That's just part of my own personal drawing style all right um, the neck here so let's carry these features over onto this side so if this is the hair right the hair is going to kind of come up and around here all right so what does my hair look like from the, the side? Um, well, I th I've got short hair, and let's say we we'll carry this over top. This would be where this is. My n the neck kind of comes down. If it slopes down like that depending on how somebody's standing obviously of course and then here would be the neck coming up into the jaw some people have you know i certainly i got a bit of a double chin but <laughs> all right we come up here and i'm just gonna put in these lips well uh, before do I how, let's do I want to get into all the details just yet? Maybe I'm just gonna finish. The structure here. Okay, and then so we've got this is the eyebrow here. Yeah, I'm just gonna. This is this is just our structure drawing here. Okay. So this helps get you in into place for your drawing, right? So we're the next drawing we're about to start here. Is we're gonna take um, someone's face, and then we're going to apply facial features to the structure. Okay, so maybe I'll leave this up for a second if anybody is still kind of following, waiting along here. Um, let's say, if I wanted to round this out, so you could draw, take the, turn this into a ball, this into another ball. Here, you know, often we have the structure in the eye here. Okay, uh, let's, um, before I go, because I want to, we're running on time here. But this gives you an idea how to just translate this onto here. The, the main thing I think that is important is understanding the size of the ear. If, if you were to draw the ear smaller, I don't think most people would notice. But it, it is, you know, if something is getting closer to us, we expect it to get a little bit larger. So it could look a little bit, it might depending on how you draw the face, it could cause a slight amount of confusion to somebody who looks at it and is like, I don't know. Because I think some people then, if the ear is too small, they think the face is maybe too big. And then they they're spend all this time erasing in here when it's actually the ear that needs to get bigger, if that makes sense. Okay, so 
I'm gonna flip to a new page. Um, and then I'm going to, let's find an image for us to use here. Um, So, I wonder if I can, let's see. I was thinking of drawing this uh, profile. Did anybody recognize this woman here? Barbara Streisand. I think, um, I guess it's, well, let's, actually, maybe we can do this because it might be helpful for people to see if we draw the looking the other way. Okay, I was thinking... Maybe this is confusing, but I can teach you to do that. That's the purpose of the class, right? So um, let's draw. How would we draw this drawing? And she's also kind of looking up a little bit. And, you know, I'm going to enlarge her face. If you want to draw it smaller and you want to get some of that really beautiful long hair in your drawing, then you could just draw the, the um, make it a smaller head here. Okay, so let's, how do I get, uh, let me see, this one here. So let's go down to this view, and I'm going to, i got my pink, well, I might get a different pink, and you know what, I think I need to turn a light on here. Oh, that's... Okay. So, um, that's better. Eyes straining to see things. Uh, let's use... It's gonna get a bunch of different reds out here and some blues. So I'm all ready to go. Okay, so how would we do this drawing here? So the f um, first thing we're gonna do is we wanna figure out, uh, let me see, well, this, uh, I wonder if that's gonna be too bright. Sorry, one second here, just gonna... Okay. So we want to figure out to start where her head is going to be on this page. So the first thing we're going to do is, like we did, I'll we'll bring this ah, previous thing here. We're going to draw this line on the front of the face because we want to figure out what angle her head is on. So. Got, uh, okay, so let's try to get this shape of her head in here first. So I can even start with, I can put a pencil down there, and then I can kind of sit back and look at the drawing. Because this is going to be really important. I mean, it's not, getting this angle is not, you know, whether she's looking up a little bit more or less is not critical, but if it really was, then doing what we're doing right now would be the really, really important if you wanted to get this as accurate as possible. So how does that look? Um, it can be a little confusing because, uh, you know, it, it, her face is kind of, it's, it's, it's not one straight line and her nose is kind of going on a different angle off of it. So I think this looks pretty good. Okay, so if that's that shape of her face, then let's just take a second to kind of illustrate, let's draw a circle that could be attached to that. All right, so I'm gonna move my sketchbook in here so you see the other side. All right, as so you see me drawing that. Right. And then likewise, let's draw 
So this should be kind of parallel right up through the middle. I know you might be saying, why do I even need to do this if we can't even see her ear? Well, even though we can't see her ear, oops, this I think should be, I'm just going to, um, the ear is helpful to give us kind of clues as to how big the whole face actually needs to be. Okay, it looks like my drawing right now, her, her head is going to be looking up a little bit um, higher of an angle than she is in the photograph. So I'm going to make a quick adjustment. So I'm, I'm just going to use maybe a slightly different pencil here, different color, so you can see my change. I know some people are like, oh, I just did exactly like you, now i got to change it. But I think it's important for you to see that just because the, I, I get things, you know, quote unquote wrong sometimes too. Oops, so here, I gotta draw this. So I, I find it can be helpful if I turn the sketchbook so it's facing me so that I can try to get this angle correct. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna. Now I'm drawing darker than you probably would do, right? Because you're gonna see this through my drawing by the very end. But I'm just, I want, always wanna draw darker so that people watching can see. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw this angle in here. Looks like I gotta do it even more. All right. Okay, pretty good. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is um, I can kind of roughly estimate where this the chin is going to be, and I'm just going to draw this in here. This line might move as I as I work on it, um, but I just want to put it in here just for as a placeholder. Okay, this is now the top of the head, the bottom of the head, roughly in here. Um, so this here was the top of the eyebrows, all right? And then we would have the eyes are gonna be roughly in here. So if we put this line in here, this is gonna be our eye line, all right? So now this tells us that the head goes from here to here and here to here. So actually I pretty much estimated the, the jaw at the, about the exact right depth. All right, so the, basically, in other words, if I draw this line out here, th these are half and half. Does that make sense? Okay. So, and just really quickly, I'm just going to draw, this is kind of where the eye is going to be. This is going to be where the nose would be, All right? So halfway between the eye and the chin is the nose, and halfway between the nose and the, the, the chin is the lips. Okay. So now we've got the structure of the face. Let's put in her ears are going to be a little bit lower than the nose, remember? And this here, so her ear, if we wanted to draw it, it could be right here. And this would be helpful, you know, people will do drawings. Let's say you do, you could, we could take her facial features, draw her, and then we could give her a totally different haircut. What would she look like with a mohawk or a, um, you know, uh, I don't know women, the names, I was going to, mop top. I don't know, I don't know any women's haircut names <laughs> as I start thinking about it. Like, um, but this also kind of helps us with like the shape of her hair. Because often, you know, sometimes people have a little bit of hair that kind of goes behind an ear. Um, or sometimes we don't see it in this photograph really, although there might be a little bit of that darkness of where her hair is, it kind of helps, you know, it's going to bubble up over top of that ear. Okay. 
I'm also just while I'm, well, you know, I was going to do the, the neck, but I think I'm going to wait for a second. Okay. So we've got the general shape of her head in place. And I'm going to keep sketching here. Okay. So now this would be if we were doing our generic face, right? This is where we would go, right? How do we get from this face to this face over here? That's that's the big leap that we got to make, right? So now we want to look at her face and start to kind of try to give it some more, make it more specific to her, right? So I'm going to kind of go, if we think of her hairline, should be you know, right here, you know, this is the generic hairline, right? Her hairline comes is a little bit higher up. So I'm going to put her hair, hairline kind of starting up here. All right, so that's helpful. All of these drawings are your, your, um, you're looking for, so let me see, I'm just going to pull this down. Every drawing begins with little points, like you're you're mapping little things out, right? So it's like if you were to draw a map of the of the of let's say of a country. Well, I'm here in Canada, so I'll use that as an example, right? And I wanted to try to get the distances accurate. Well, wherever I put that first mark and I put that first dot down and I say that's Toronto right? And then I draw a line to Montreal, right? Well, that distance now is, if I want my map to be accurate, that has to carry over for the entire rest of the country, right? So this distance between these two cities, now I can use that to figure out how far Montreal is to, to New York, and then how far New York is to Miami is, you know, twice or three times, three Montreal distances, right? Or then six of those gets me to Winnipeg or, you know, so on. You understand? So these little things identifying where I want the hairline to happen, where the jaw is, where the nose, all of those things are really important. And we start kind of building on there. So it's, it's also really important to kind of get those things right, right off the top. Okay. So let's keep plowing ahead here. Um, her, so we got her hairline. She doesn't have a, a very pronounced kind of brow. It's fairly subtle, right? So we've got this kind of coming down to her, and then we've got her nose, right? Which is probably the most famous part of her face is her nose, right? And she's got this kind of famous kind of lump on her nose, right? So we can draw that, and then so we've got this kind of her kind of then there's almost like a little if we draw that kind of circle it kind of comes out to there and then kind of points up a bit all right and then comes back so i'm working on her profile like like literally working around the edges kind of sculpting outside of her face first all right and then here's her top lip Right, which is, comes out a little bit further than this line. And then I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit. Um, or is that... Is this going to... Oh, it won't stick there. Uh, maybe, maybe it's good for us to kind of keep it about the same size. Okay, I just wanted to see, because it's dark there, how that lip kind of works. I'm just going to draw it like this. And then her bottom lip is, is rather than kind of coming straight out, kind of go, almost goes down on a quite steep angle. And then she comes out. And then when we're drawing women's faces, generally the chin is um, 
so if we're drawing a woman's, like a man's face, the, the chin comes forward. On a woman's face, we tend to kind of make it go further back, right? So if I, you could see where I've gotten this. If I do this, it's going to look, make her look very masculine, right? So instead, her, this, hmm, let's get another red here. Actually, this bottom lip is going to come in a bit, and then her chin is going to come this way. And already, that's going to soften her face up a little bit. And I've made her, her head a little bit longer here. She's got a bit of a longer face. And then here's her jaw. Okay, so we'll, you'll see, when I go over top of this with blue, you'll see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, so now we've got um, a bunch. And, and if I also, if I'm feeling that I want to double check any of these things, I feel like actually even this chin is going to come back a little bit more as I start going over it with the blue. But, um, okay, anyway, so let's do the eyes here. So if I was to put her eyes right here, it probably isn't going to look like her. Look how her eyes she's, are kind of much more deep set, right? They're um, further back into her face than maybe some other people might have. So if her lips are coming out to here, here's her nostril, and I draw a line straight up, right? Her eye is actually going to be closer to here. All right? So I'm always looking for the clues in, in here. I draw this up, and you see how just putting her, her eye back here, as opposed to being closer to the nose, starts to make it look a little bit more like her. Okay, we've got her eyebrow up here. And now that I've got some of this in place, I'm going to now draw her hair a little bit. I'm just going to quickly think of like her hair is kind of coming down her face underneath her chin down here. And when I'm drawing hair, I always tend to make it a little bit maybe wavier than it actually is. And let's say if this is the t her hair, it's going to be a little wider on her head. All right, and this comes down. So we don't see the back of her neck. And then kind of actually, so you can see this kind of hair almost seems to separate right behind her head here. Okay, and then the last thing here is her neck. I want to be careful not to, I was kind of almost giving her a bit of an Adam's apple, which would be, you know, um, not correct for her particular face, right? Um, and I don't think we see, yeah, we don't, her rest of her body sort of hidden by her hair in that photograph. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is, oh, my, my phone is actually the, what's filming above here. I was going to set a timer. Um, I'm going to try to get as much of this drawing done in the next 10 minutes, believe it or not, as possible, so that we can, I want to show you some artwork that one of the other students made, which is, I think, super exciting. So, in this case here... Um, I'm going to start with her, I'm going to start with her nose, just because I want to, I want to get that, nail this, this nose, I think it's really important, so it's kind of this arc shape, right, coming up into her brow, and you can see I'm kind of very subtle with that, okay, and then her nose, getting this little bit of this notch, Up, top lip, 
I'm gonna again. I'm outlining her face here, and okay. I'm gonna be careful. We want to try, especially when we're drawing women, we want to be careful about putting a hard line on this jaw. Otherwise, it's going to make her look very masculine really quickly. So, got her neck in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to, let's do her nostril here. Right, if we think of this being a ball and then another smaller ball right here. All right. Ah, you guys. Would be right here, that part of her nose. And then with her mouth on this side. Coming down. So these lips Kind of come up. On one side. Okay. Now I you know I, now that I'm looking at her, you know, she doesn't in this photograph doesn't really have very dark lips or she's not wearing much lipstick at all so this line might have been a little bit too dark but I think it's going to be fine right again people probably aren't going to be looking at both of these drawings side by side <laughs> although they are maybe right now but when it's finished people probably won't be looking for those details so you can see here look at how you know there, there's this kind of almost an arc shape with her, her face like this. So rather than being straight down, if if you're, if, again, if that chin is coming too far out there, it's going to look really masculine and kind of like a Roman soldier pretty quickly. So we're softening that up with her, uh, with the chin coming back. Okay, now I'm going to draw her eye. And... I'm actually, even though I've kind of identified it here, I'm going to even move it a little bit further back. Kind of just to... Um, just her eyes are so deep set that I always find if I exaggerate things just a little bit and next, this time next week, we're going to be talking all about caricature and, and noticing those little... Um, unique qualities of people really helps us get their personality. So I'm pushing her eye even further back. She's got her iris here. Oh, and her looks like her pupil. Now she's got really dark, like, eye shadow and what is it mascara or I don't I really don't even know what all the different makeup things are that she's wearing but her it makes her eyes look really dark right so we want to capture a little bit of that by darkening we can as we shade in we can kind of darken this area a little bit we got her top eyelid And I'm now putting in her her eyebrows. I want to avoid going too dark with those eyebrows, otherwise it's going to make her look more masculine again. Right? Okay, so I've told myself I've got about five minutes left to finish this drawing. So I want to use that time to get her hair in here and do a little bit of quick shading. So, 
because I think, you know, right now I look at this drawing and it kind of looks like her, but I think as we put some hair into her face, it's going to um, make her look a lot more like her. So let's do that. So I'm going to, let's say, imagine following one hair on this journey down her face. All right, I'm going to do... a few times, right? And this is what we're, I'm showing you is kind of my style for drawing hair. And I can imagine some people, not everybody, likes this style of drawing hair, but, you know, if you want to take their classes, if they're teaching how to draw hair, then by all means you can follow them, but this is just the way that I've always drawn it, or I've sort of come to draw it, I guess I haven't always drawn hair this way, but I find it just, um, works pretty well. Somebody's mowing the lawn outside. Thank you. I'm curious to know if, if that shows up in the audio at all. I would imagine that the microphone I'm wearing kind of cuts a lot of that out. But So I'm barely looking at the photograph right now. I'm kind of looking at it when I, those first few guidelines that I put down and then I kind of use my imagination because I love just playing around a little bit. So you don't, at this point, don't worry about trying to get the hair exactly as I've done it. Just sort of, you get those first few lines in and then just knock yourself out. Go ahead. Have some fun drawing your hair in. So this is what I, I mean, like the difference between like a lot of people will, will draw their draw hair and then kind of be really scribbly about it. And personally, the hairs I think this probably I would say the funnest part of the head to draw. This is the area that I like spending most of my time on, really. Um, and if you've seen some of my really big paintings, my my wife was just talking about a really big painting that uh, um, this company KPMG bought, uh, was it last year? Kind of basically, I just took this kind of hair motif and expanded into a giant, you know, I don't know, 20 foot painting, you know, because I just love doing what I'm doing right now. And I told you I would be done in five minutes. So that's what I'm talking about. I can get really um, distracted just drawing this hair. Okay, so now. Um, I'm looking at my drawing and then the, uh, the, the image over here. What, what is, you know, so-called wrong with, with these two things? One thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to articulate her, her, uh, chin bone, her, her, she's got this kind of, uh, these, these cheeks in here. So I'm going to kind of shade that here in a second. The other thing is right now this I feel, I'm going to add more hair to the back of her head to kind of make her head because this as it is right now when I look at my drawing it to me it looks like she's just gotten out of the shower and her hair is stuck to her head. You know it's wet hair and it's just glued to her head. So I need to widen this and make 
more hair coming up off here so to give it more volume so I'm just going to keep on adding more hair all right so these this circle that you see in here some of these guidelines ideally you would have drawn them much lighter than I have right so they you wouldn't see this kind of halo kind of happening inside here maybe sorry I'm just going to turn the sketchbook momentarily and just kind of again bringing a little bit more height into this drawing okay um I've sh I showed in, well, I'm going to, let's, I do want to, part of me is like, oh, I'm just going to finish this and move on, but, you know, I, I do want to try to add some shading to this here. So, um, I'm going to do a little bit more of that, and I'm going to say five more minutes from now, I'm going to finish. Okay, so I'm just darkening her top lip. So, I use... I'll, I'll just show you, this is what it looks like when I'm doing this drawing. When I'm looking at this drawing, I'm squinting my eyes at the original, and that's, or at the, the, the computer screen, because it helps get rid of all of the detail. And I look at it, and it's like, where are the darkest parts of this face? Darkest parts are under the nose, under the lip, and then her eyes, and a little bit of her cheekbone, right? So, let's those are things that we need to nail to get this drawing kind of close to finish. Now, under her nose. Ryan's going to cast a little bit of a shadow onto the top lip. A little bit darker on there. I'm going to use the side of my pencil. I remember I talked about kind of just dropping the pencil and picking it up like a crane so that I'm kind of holding it like this. And then I'm just going to keep, she's got a little bit, as most people do, a little darker underneath here. You can even see I'm kind of making very light circles. Um, I want to be careful, you know, there is, there just like anybody, we have little lines on our face, but just being a little bit careful not to go too hard, like very subtle. I don't even know if it shows up that well on the camera. Um, any kind of lines around the mouth, eyes and nose, especially when we're drawing a woman, is going to make her look a little bit older. So, And this is a fairly youthful portrait. I wonder how old she was here. It looks like she's probably in her... 20s, would you say? 20s? Um, also, by the way, I don't, I don't have my comment. I mean, I don't know if anybody's making, leaving any comments here or not. Um, so I haven't had a chance to look at the comments, but I'll, I will in a few minutes. So. Get in here where her cheeks are. I don't know if that shows, it doesn't look like it's showing up very well on camera, but there is uh, now that cheekbone is kind of, and again, I want to be careful about going too much. Here, I'm going to blend that into her jaw, just darkening under here. And likewise, I want to be careful, even though I'm going to avoid putting a big line there, I want to avoid getting too, I want this transition to be fairly smooth between her, her chin and then her cheek. Otherwise, it's going to look like, it's going to, draw her chin out and make her look more masculine again. Alright, so this just needs to be 
darker in there. If I had more time too, what I would probably do is I would, maybe actually I, I will, uh, do I not, I don't have any charcoal with me. No, I just think about it. Hmm. Opening up my pencil case here. Um, do I want to use any of these darker pencils? Maybe, maybe I'll try using this 5B to really kind of quickly Hmm, it's not showing up on the camera very well, but I guess it means I gotta go darker. Okay, so I'm, what I'm using is I'm using this 5B pencil, and then I can go in here and, and blend it with fairly easily with my finger. Or you can see it's picking up that, uh, the pencil marks. And even there, that change, well, it's hard to see on the camera. I think, um, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this pink, actually, and I'm gonna sharpen my pencil kind of quickly here. What can I put it into? I'm gonna have the rest of my tea. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna use, cause see I have this pink chin coming out here. Well, I want to try to de-emphasize that a little bit because, and if I go over it with the blue, it's actually going to bring it out a little more. So I'm going to go in and around here. Right, so just doing a little bit of this helps kind of pop her head a little bit forward. I, I ah, I'm just gonna keep on. I'm gonna make this darker. Come on, Michael. I tell people to go darker. You gotta get darker. Come on, don't be so chicken. Let's do this. Okay. <sighs> don't have any fear about going darker. All right, so I gotta tell myself. I gotta walk the walk, you know. Okay. Well, it's hard to do when, when I'm speeding around here because then I start getting these lines that I don't want. To get rid of those things, you just start kind of having to blend a little bit in different directions. Um, okay. I will, well, let's kind of go back to her hair. And I'm going to add just a few more kind of hairs in between hairs. If you're uh, finding this class to be helpful and you're learning something, I would love it if you could um, leave a comment, especially the videos that have already been up. 
And if you really enjoyed this video or other videos after the stream is over, leaving a comment um, would be really nice. People send me really nice comments in the live stream um, all the time, but they don't kind of appear at the, um, when you're looking at the video afterwards. Somet sometimes the chat isn't visible to everybody, so I would love to see some of the wonderful discussion that happens during the class in the comment section or in the live stream comment feed in the video afterwards would be really special um and liking the video subscribing to the channel sharing this video or other ones that you found particularly helpful with your friends and posting it on your own facebook feed etc those would be really helpful and if you want to um, help out in another way, is you can leave a small donation via PayPal. Um, the link is below. People have, I know a lot of people have said, well, I don't use PayPal. I don't want to um, pay through PayPal. Is there other ways? You can send a Interact e-transfer through my email. I'll send you, put my email in the comment section shortly. Okay. Um, I do want to do, put a little bit of depth into this hair. So to do, so I've got the hair kind of roughly drawn in here. Now I'm going to quickly get a little bit darker here. So this is where her ear was or is. So this I'm going to darken in here a little bit underneath here it's going to be a little bit darker all right we got on the top of her head actually it's kind of dark so we can darken some of this you can see i'm going pretty quickly like um so you don't need, I mean, to do this, to make it really nice, I'd, I'd spend some time really kind of trying to to do a, a, as good a job as possible. But we don't always necessarily have that much time. So, but just putting in a little bit of variety here is just going to give it a little more depth and make her hair look like it has way more volume. Um, okay, I tell myself one more minute here. And <laughs> I know I've said five more minutes five times, but we got to wrap this up. Oh my goodness, Michael. Okay, I think you, I, if I continue working on this, you can see where we're going to go. Now, I'm looking at my drawing. Does it look exactly like um, Barbara Streisand? No, not really. If I was to show this drawing to people and ask them who it looks like, would they know it's Barbara Streisand? Maybe, maybe. People, if I, then I feel like I got the nose pretty well here. Um, I feel like to get. I think I could have even moved her eye down a little bit more. So her eye actually could be right here, and I feel like that might capture her a little bit more. Um, her lips also, I think, could be a little bit bigger. I could have made her lips a little bit bigger. Um, that would have... All of those little tiny details would have helped. Am I bummed out about it? Not at all. I could... Honestly, I could care less. I could care less personally about making drawings that look exactly like people. Personally, I make art for the pleasure of making art and um, to learn stuff to uh, as a as a meditative exercise. So, I'm personally not bothered at all by the the those little differences. If I wanted to draw this drawing again, I'm sure I could get a lot more accuracy because now I've, I've, I've learned a lot of lessons here and 
those lessons are going to make that second drawing easier. Just like we saw in Heidi's drawing, the second drawing she did was more accurate. Um, clearly, I think she spent maybe a little bit more time on it as well, but even those little things like the way that she drew the teeth the second time, the way she drew the hair the second time, the eyes and the lips, all those things she nailed the second time around. And it, you, some, so you need that kind of the, the sketching process to get you to that next artwork. So that's what would happen if I was to do this again. I've never drawn Barbara's... I don't even know why it occurred to me to draw her today, but um, I think I just liked this profile photograph, and I thought that would be kind of... It's really kind of a striking thing, and her nose is very... Um, such a iconic part of her personality or her character. So I thought that would be kind of useful to draw. Okay, now... Um, what else? Oh, I was going to show some images by this um maybe while i'm doing this i'm going to put up my pre my drawing oh. uh, here we go so i'm just going to put that up there just for anybody who still wants again i feel like i could have there could be more hair back here i'm just looking at that um let me find these photos by this other student here. Oh, here they are. Come on. So I got an email from a former uh, student of mine, uh, Janet. Um, Janet King. And I wanted to share with you... I mean, these are just amazing. This is... She's been following along. I don't think she's been watching the live stream. If you if you are watching it live now, hi, Janet. If you're watching this two weeks from now, hi. <laughs> Either way, um, I, I, I really wanted to um, share these really cool um, images that you have made with people. I think we're going to go... Come, where is it? We'll kind of go back in time a little bit. So, okay. And let's bring this down here. So, okay, so here's one of Janet's images here. This is kind of going back. Uh, I don't know what episode, this is earlier on when we were drawing animals and we were drawing some dogs. So look how amazing this image is. It makes me super happy to see these things. Like, um, beautiful use of color as well. Like, uh, um, you could see these, like this kind of very violet, purple, um, pinks and browns in here, but it, it's believable. Like that, they all combine and we got some kind of darker blues in there. Um, just even the way that you've drawn the ears and the nose and the, the legs, there's a very, it reminds me, who does it remind me of? It reminds me a little bit of, uh, Toulouse-Lautrec, the, um, famous for, for drawing all the, the Can Can dancers and the Moulin Rouge in Paris. He was a contemporary of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of those uh, artists like um, Van Gogh and Gauguin, etc. So you can see your style coming through here. She's talking about, look at this awesome drawing of this guy. I like the shadows you did here um, below. Beautiful. That's great. I can't even remember. Did we do this as a group? <laughs> it's been so... I think we... Yeah, I think this is based on a drawing we did uh, together. It was like so long ago. Um, this is I love this drawing. The study of the, the 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 this woman from behind and her shawl and that checker pattern, fantastic. You really nailed the folds in there, and the shadows on the and the the uh, her the fabric, really well done. Look at that. And then the Julie Doucette drawing. I think this is when we first started talking about portraiture. Beautiful. That turned out fantastic. 
I, again, just looking at these just reminds me how important it is to, to try drawing in other people's styles to help you find your own style. Great. Wow, I love the color you put in here. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, and I, yeah, I, I love that you colored this in because we didn't do that as a, as a class. So this looks fantastic. I mean, you should be really proud of these, Janet. And this is your self-portrait from last week. And this is exceptional. Oh, my God. Um, so let's just look. I guess I can't see. It's, the image is breaking down a little bit in terms of uh, the quality. So it's pixelating a little bit. But... Look at this beautiful attention to detail. I talked about, I, I do want to do a, a class on how to draw glasses, um, but you've done a pretty good job. They, it's pretty, glasses when we're drawing them on people is, you know, I feel bad for when people are in classes and, and in my classes with glasses and, ever, and there's other people who don't have them and don't have that challenge to work from. Um, because it's just an extra th step on top of it, but you really did a fantastic job. Um, I like, you could see the focus and concentration you put into nailing the eyes and the mouth. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I would say it looks like your neck is maybe a little bit narrow and then it makes it look like your, your, uh, shoulders are kind of it makes it kind of almost look like your head is very very far forward and that your the rest of your body is very small so i would just that would be my only comment on this and i think in your email you're talking about how to draw like actual white or gray hair and um it's sort of like what we were doing in just this drawing here of um barbra streisand right so the less um you have to be really careful about um, going into those darks. And so I actually think you've done a pretty good job. Like I, I would, uh, with, you know, even though you have white hair still is hair. So we're still going to see some of these strands and, and we see a little bit of it. I'd say you could still add a few more in there. It's just when it comes to, adding any shading, you want to kind of be a little bit on the lighter side. I really don't think you need to do too much more to this drawing. I would say it's pretty darn good. I think most people watching this, if they could pull off a self-portrait this well, would be over the moon. So this, I feel, I feel really proud of, for you uh, and of you uh, uh, for having done this, this drawing, like, what a journey, this is fantastic, you know, and I, I can't say it enough that if you're, even if you're just doing this, and you're not super happy with it, you're doing better than 99.9% .9 of the people out there who are terrified about doing any of the exercise we're doing, and I think it's, it's so plainly obvious to me that it's not that hard at all, so, um, it's maybe, well, I mean, I'm sure people are like, yeah, it's easy for you to say it's pretty hard, but you know, relatively speaking, compared to all the other things that, you know, activities that you can learn out there for, 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 you know, Heidi, for Janet, for all the other people who have been following along and making artwork, think about, you know, uh, like what we're talking two, two three, four hours a week over the course of three months and this is where you're at like you literally have this skill down right so this it's no longer a question of whether you can draw or not you know compared to the vast majority of people you can draw right so the, i think the any myth that people have of not being good enough or i can't draw is shattered because if you were to go sit on an airplane and somebody was to look over your and you open your sketchbook up and somebody looks at it and be like, whoa, those are amazing. Because for them, doing anything that we're doing right now just seems completely out of the range of possibilities. It's like saying to somebody, you know, you know, 
you go and, and play hockey with Wayne Gretzky or baseball with, you know, um, Babe Ruth or like, it's just like, that's, I, there's no way I'm on that same level, but it, these are things are so achievable. Anyway, I could go on and on and rant and rant and rant about this stuff. I, I really do want to thank everybody for, um, staying with me over the past, uh, we've been at this since what, April, were we April or March when we started doing the, these episodes. Um, so what a journey, what a journey we've all been on. So I'm going to leave it here for today. Uh, again, please like subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you can find out when the next videos are coming up. This is episode 24 of what will be 40 drawing um, uh, classes. And towards the end, I'm going to start up with the acrylic painting ones sometime um, probably in early August. So stay tuned for that. And that's another reason to subscribe to the channel and, and join the Facebook page, blah, 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 blah. You know all this. Um, so have yourselves a wonderful rest of your afternoon. If you're about to sit down for dinner or breakfast or lunch, wherever you happen to be on the planet, enjoy your, uh, your, your lunch. Um, and I think that's an, enough for me today <laughs> from me today. Okay. Bye everybody. Have yourselves a wonderful afternoon, morning or, or yeah.